So now we move on to our fireside chat panel discussion on the society's theme of our rebranding, global relevance, local ambition, from the past to the future outlook of the financial industry. Panel discussion will, is moderated by Dr. Jimmy Jim, CFA, Head of Global Markets, ICBC Asia. Jimmy is a true vet investment veteran and a former society president and current advisor of CFA Society Hong Kong. I'll pass you over to Jimmy who will introduce the participants of this evening. Thank you very much. Good evening to you all. It's really my pleasure being the moderator of this uh, fireside chat. We don't have the physical fire, but we have a fire in our hearts. <laughs> so let me uh, you know, introduce our guests today. They are the uh, veterans and uh, experts in the industry. On my left, um, Mr. Calvin Zhao, a young entrepreneur and founder and CEO of uh, Vispressoft, a financial search engine that has a client base of global investment banks, law firms, and also local SME enterprises. Calvin is also uh, a FinTech lecturer at the Hong Kong University and is recognized as the top AI player by the EFNET, IFTA, and ICT. Further to my uh, left, next to uh, Calvin is uh, um, Dr. Kling Ngau. He's the Executive Director of Financial Services Development Council who was named the CEO of the year in Hong Kong for two years by Asia Asset Management. Um, in our industry, we all know him, so uh, he's a, such a famous person. Dr. O has been uh, devoting great efforts in talent development initiatives. And then move to my uh, further left. Uh, our old friend, Mr. Paul Smith, now is the CEO of the uh, Warren Cup, where he works with an independent corporate director for investment funds, financial technology business, and private wealth managers. Paul was also the former president and CEO of CFA Institute. And today, we also have uh, two guests from abroad. Um, from Singapore, we have uh, Mr. Eric Sim. Um, a former banker, speaker, and uh, founder of the Institute of Life, a training institute with a mission to train young professionals to be more successful at work and in life. Eric is also the most followed CFA charter holder on LinkedIn. He was recently named LinkedIn Top Voices 2020 in Singapore. Uh, I heard that he has more than 2 million followers. Wow. Wow. A big KOL. <laughs> Okay, uh, Thank you. from uh, Beijing, we have uh, Madam Jane Shao, founder and president of Lumia Pavilions Limited. It's a, similar, a, a cinema investment company focusing on the development and operation of high-end cinemas in China. Jane has also served as the board of, direct, board of governance of CFA Institute. She was accredited by Forbes as one of the 15 power women to watch in Asia. Now we can uh, watch her in our screen. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, we are going back to uh, focus on our theme tonight, um, from the past to a uh, future outlook of the financial uh, industry. Um, I would say, you know, in the old ancient days, when we talk about investment, we focus on risk return and liquidity management. And with that, you know, we see the framework further enhanced by acting, more, uh, acting in more elements, such as the global uh, investment performance standards. And also we talk about the use of derivatives um, for the uh, portfolio overlay. But today, the world is not the same, like today we put on the mask. So uh, today the investment world is very much driven by technology and theme-based investment namely the FinTech. So uh, Mr. Ho, uh, the secretary already mentioned a lot of it. Um, we have the AI, we have the blockchain, uh, cloud computing, uh, big data, and also compliance. So uh, RegTech and uh, ShouldTech becomes a very uh, you know, uh, hot topic right now. ESG, always promoted by the CFA Institute, uh, is about the climate change, CO2 emission, green financing, etc., making our world better. 
And we also seen quite a lot of uh, regional policy support. Uh, in Hong Kong, uh, we always focus on the uh, you know, Greater Bay Area initiatives. We also talk about more issues of green bonds and uh, Islamic financing. So today I'm going to turn to my, uh, you know, panelists uh, for a few specific questions. Um, I uh, go to uh, Jane Shao uh, from Beijing first. Actually, uh, recently we heard about, you know, um, Hong Kong and also sit in China. Like the GDP, GDP of Shenzhen has already surpassed Hong Kong. And also I heard from the, um, you know, um, my friends in Japan, they are going to replace Hong Kong as the financial centers. But, you know, my question to you is, is Hong Kong really a lagger in terms of the financial market development when comparing to uh, China and other centers in the world? Um, and also, um, what are the, uh, you know, challenges or opportunities for Hong Kong? So, Jane, so I would like to pick your brain. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, Jay. Now, yeah. Yes. We, we can hear you now. Okay. Okay, uh, thanks. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this panel. Um, I It is my uh, honor to be part of this celebration of 25th anniversary of Hong Kong Society. I got my charter in 1998 in wow. Hong Kong, and I feel very much going back home to see so many friends here. Uh, secondly, I think um, there's no distinction between old investment and uh, modern investment. At the end of the day, investment meant to uh, find good companies at good, good price and bring returns to the investors. And, um, and also, uh, re certainly regarding the comparison between Hong Kong and other markets, to me, Hong Kong has always been a leading global financial center as important as London and New York. It bridges the capital and business in the West and the East. Uh, somebody um, will argue that uh, Hong Kong uh, might be challenged by other regional centers uh, such as Tokyo, Shanghai, and Shenzhen. But I think Hong Kong still has its advantages in terms of uh, legal system, currency exchange, uh, taxation, regulation, product offerings, sources of capital, and many other aspects. Uh, and, and also, I think uh, the capital market in Hong Kong has always been trying to reinvent itself for for uh, for uh, for decades. Um, it, at the beginning, uh, one of the examples is the composition of Hansen Index. Um, for last twenty, uh, for last forty years, it has been uh, has become so much more di diversified, from financing local tycoons to bring uh, capital to uh, Asian tigers in China. Since the beginning of mainland China, Hong Kong has benefited from financing window companies such as mainland uh, municipalities, uh, such as Shanghai Industrial and Beijing Enterprises in 1990s, to facilitating uh, the restructuring of incumbent uh, state-owned enterprises such as China Mobile and IC ICBC in the first decade of this century and from financing private uh, manufacturers, property developers, to the new economy rules, such as Tencent and Alibaba. So I think time has proved the resilience and adaptivity of Hong Kong markets and the professionals there. Uh, most recently, Hansen Index company just announced that uh, Taiku might be dropped from the index and Meituan, Anta, and but whether um, Asia Pacific could be eventually included. It demonstrated that Asia has become not only the largest manufacturing site for the world, but also the largest consumption markets uh, in the world. The, the pandemic uh, itself uh, has, is a crisis, but also provides a lot of opportunities. In China, only uh, 2 trillion RMB outbound consumption has been contained onshore mm. because of the travel uh, restrictions. 
people now are willing to spend more on consumption, healthcare, and wealth management. Many domestic brands have become more and more popular here. With the recent settlement of RCEP treaty, there could be more opportunities for Hong Kong to work with Japan, Korea, and ASEAN countries. Meanwhile, I think the return of China concept companies seeking for dual listings in Hong Kong, other than US, will also bring more high-tech um, and internet companies to Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Uh, I was part of Peking University Entrepreneur Club mm. not long ago. Um, some of uh, some of my member uh, club members had their listings, dual listings in Hong Kong. Uh, their new Oriental Education and Wuxi, Wuxi Pharmacy. So I think I have a very uh, strong confidence in Hong Kong, and um, I, I think there will be another twenty five years and more of great success for Hong Kong. Uh, as a capital market and for Hong Kong CFA society. Thank oh, you. That's great, Jane. So I, I asked you one personal question. So are you going to bring your company to IPO in Hong Kong in the future? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to hear. So we have more opportunities, uh, as you mentioned. So I guess uh, it's very important, you know, we stay positive and also the uh, CFA members to work together to, uh, you know, foster our business and uh, make Hong Kong a better place for business. Um, yeah. So I, I, I turn my, uh, my face to uh, Paul, who's been in Hong Kong long enough. I call you a local. And, uh, you know, um, I would like to, uh, you know, get your perspective on, uh, you know, how Hong Kong can do better to advance our financial industry. And also, what are your recommendations to do with the key challenges going forward? Of course, you have to talk about the challenges. Right. <laughs> right. That's... Um... That's obviously the fastball tonight, yeah. uh, Jimmy. Thank you. Jane, it's lovely to see you. I haven't seen Jane in a long while, so it's great, great to see her there. And, and I just wanted to thank uh, Richard and all the board of, uh, of the society here for getting this done. Um, for five years, I laboured away. I had to retire and we had to get someone decent in to do my old job, Mark, to get this thing done. So uh, now you've got a decent CEO um, that was accomplished. So I'm absolutely thrilled about that. I think the, 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 the world that we now live in is, is as um, Mr. Hoy said, it's very, very different to, uh, to the one that was. In the old days, I think Hong Kong um, had a very fast-paced, adaptive type of a model. And I think we are faced at the moment with enormous opportunity, whether it's the Greater Bay Area or China's growth in general. But to access that, I think we have to have uh, the challenge is better uh, coordination mm. with Beijing and amongst the various uh, authorities uh, here in Hong Kong to be able to properly access that. And I also think there's a mindset change that we need to think about here in Hong Kong. Um, you know, Jane used the phrase um, global financial center. Mm. I'm not sure that that has any relevance anymore. And I think we need to think a little bit about that in that New York is not a global financial center. New York is America's financial center, and it helps American companies do business globally, and it helps international companies do business within America and access the American capital markets. Since Brexit, London is exactly the same. London is no longer a global financial center. And I think uh, Hong Kong is faced with exactly the same challenge. We are not a global financial center. We are now obviously um, part of China, yeah. and we have to face up to the reality that that means that we are China's financial center, hopefully, and we will play a role internationally, intermediating between international companies who want to access China and Chinese companies that want to access um, Western capital. And that's a great opportunity. But to embrace it, we have to have strategy and coordination um, with Beijing, but also here locally between the FSDC, and we'll hear from Dr. Ao in a second, um, uh, the HKMA, the SFC, uh, and the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And that we have never had before, really, frankly. So I think that's the biggest challenge, is how do we design a framework within which we as financial services professionals know the products and services that are going to be offered going forward. And I think today it's, it's, it's what I would describe as ad hoc development. Mm. It's we do, we do things in, 
in uh, family office world, we do things in the OFCs, we do things with limited partnerships. But what we really need to say is what is going to thrive best in that community. And I, I'm very interested in Calvin's remarks because I too am in, involved in some fintech businesses. Yep. And frankly, the support that those businesses get is not enough. If Hong Kong really wants to be a fintech center, it's got to do a lot more than that in terms of taxation, regulation, and government support. So for me, it's a world of opportunity. We have a fabulous future, as Jane said, but to access it, we've got to have a clearly articulated strategy that runs through Beijing to our chief executive and down through all organs of our government so that as financial services professionals, we know exactly where to position our businesses going forward. Yeah, good to hear that we have uh, so many business opportunities and also more collaboration too. You mentioned about the framework, it's an ad hoc approach. Does it mean that the government is doing more? How we can uh, play a role in it? I think, the, I think the government needs to direct us more. I mean, you, you take something uh, like the offshore financial uh, company legislation that we have, I'm not sure that that's really core to the way perhaps that Beijing would think mm. about Hong Kong. So I think it's a great initiative in and of itself, but is it going to be an initiative that really thrives in the new world that we're working in? And I think that's what I would like to see, is much more of a top-down approach to, mm. saying, to saying which types of products and services are really going to thrive over the next decade and then making sure that all participants are focused on that. And we can't do everything. We can't be all things to all men. There'll be winners and losers within that. But we need to be much more precise in terms of, of that strategic development. Yeah, fair comment. So uh, you mentioned we are in the new world. So obviously in the new world, we have a new way to do things. So technology is obviously the most important one. So uh, Kevin, can you share with us the significant innovation and challenges given by technology in our industry in Hong Kong, specific to Hong Kong? Absolutely. And first of all, I just want to thank the CFA Society and the CFA Board for having some tech representation uh, on the panel as well. Um, so part of my job is to help financial institutions and professionals understand how AI and machine learning and big data can be adopted you know, to, to different uh, verticals, yeah. right? And, and it's amazing to see today we have image recognition, we have natural language processing, we have a chatbot, you know, all these we see growing applications across different sectors, wealth tax, insure tech, etc. But I think to many people, and especially people outside of finance as well, it's still a very black box, you know, mystified mm -hmm. concept. And, and I think there are three, you know, challenges we have to tackle also in Hong Kong. So first is about building trust, not just on the technology, but also the practitioner of these technology. A lot of uh, these companies are startups like us yep. are, 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 have not been around for a long time. So how do you build that trust? And that trust is not only a, a startup client relationship. It, it's also an investor startup in, a relationship. So when we talk about a seat round in Silicon Valley, that's about one to two, even sometimes five million US dollars. But in Hong Kong, it's probably half of that. It's, it's, it's showing that, you know, it's still, it, at the beginning of the journey and, and building that trust on you know, how we can grow this sector together is, is very important. Now, the second thing is now about evangelizing the use of these technology. So having more use cases, yeah. no one wants to be the first. And that's very hard for, for fintech as well, because you know, finance, it's about managing risk and innovation sometimes is about taking risk. So, so how can we get the first use case out and really um, make it work or learn from the mistakes, be able to accept you know, both, both outcomes, right? And then the last thing is then the support, right? How can we build the right regulations, but also the attitude, the culture, uh, as well as understanding, mutual understanding on data protection, right? Because the first thing that people ask us uh, about AI is, hey, Am I sharing the data? Is the data yours, right? I mean, 
if there is a clear ownership of the data, it's okay to collaborate and share, but then if you want to pull it back out, that's fine. So there has to be trust in that process. And, and really, uh, that is how AI can become better. Because if it's a siloed company, then uh, it, it wouldn't work as well as a shared data sort of framework. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so I think these three things is, is what we have to focus on in Hong Kong. So very true. So I, I want to pick your thing on one very common debate, yeah. where the regulations, regulations we do good to, your, to the financial or fintech. So recently we see the Alibaba case, right? So what do you think? So you, you think the regulators should move quickly to put on more regulations or how can they you, uh, let you to uh, grow your business? I think uh, one of the classic example, fastest growing fintech area is, is you know, KYC onboarding. Uh -huh. I mean, it's driven by regulation. People make lots of good, good money off that topic. And, and you know, it can be a good thing, regulation. It push institutions to, to spend money on it. But it can also... Uh, sometimes lag behind because they are bad practitioners yep. or, or sometimes uh, ch people just don't understand and misuse the technology. So I think there has to be a lot of communication between yep. you know, policy makers and, and the startups. And I think Hong Kong is doing that to some okay. extent. Right, yep. right. Ping, I think we have the technology, but we need people too. So I read an article summarizing those talent program from different cities in China. For example, if you're a CFA charter holder, mm. you go to work in a particular city in China, they will give you some uh, prizes, some real money. So uh, can you tell me more, um, do we have special policy, especially on the talent development, to support our local financial in and investment industry? Yeah, uh, sure. Um, because I get, uh, before I get onto that, I just need to uh, address uh, the comments made by the two uh, distinguished speakers. Yes. I think we do have a holistic strategy, but uh, I, I, you know, I, I can spend the whole night talking about it. Uh, but uh, definitely what, what you mentioned, you know, a, a better coordination with China, um, uh, mainland China is definitely important because a lot of our initiatives are related to uh, mainland China. And in terms of uh, supporting the FinTech uh, uh, startup, uh, the government has recently rolled out a uh, uh, matching program. Uh, uh, and again, uh, you know, you, you know, I encourage everyone to look it up. Uh, you know, definitely, you know, we are committing uh, more yep. uh, to our developing our local startup. Uh, and in terms of uh, talent development, uh, there, there are a lot of figures here. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to uh, quote all of them. But I just want to share uh, some personal experience. Uh, I hope I, I'm not uh, offending uh, a lot of you here, but I, I certainly was one of the guilty parties because uh, the operating cost in Hong Kong is very high. Mm. So a lot of firms uh, have uh, a very short-term outlook, uh, mm. mainly focusing on profitability. So when we recruit staff, uh, we always try to uh, look for people that have relevant experience. So we do spend on uh, training uh, because a lot of firms have uh, internship program uh, uh, and so on. But they are targeting a very narrow segment of, of the market. And again, uh, recently I've been uh, taking up uh, teaching, a part-time teaching post at the Hong Kong U. So uh, I, I realize actually when you talk to students, financial services industry to them basically uh, means being either a fund manager or private banking sale, or RM, right? That's completely wrong. Um, so that brings back to uh, you know, a, a broad-based education. Uh, to all our students, uh, and also it's, it's about the competitiveness of Hong Kong. Uh, you know, the financial services industry has a very uh, diverse uh, 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 job uh, offering. So compliance, risk management, for example, Hong Kong very good at you know yep. the, the rule of law and all that. Uh, and uh, even you know uh, fintech, you know fin and tech, you know we have the tech, uh, the, the financial industry. So um, we you know it's a big sandbox for people trying out uh, you know, their, their, their new ideas in Hong Kong, tapping into the global uh, uh, financial market. So um, to round up um, a bit of marketing here, uh, we're rolling out a uh, uh, young talent membership program yeah. next year, targeting all universities uh, students in Hong Kong. But I'll need the help from uh, CFA members uh, and uh, other industry players as well. What, what we want to do is to um, prepare some videos uh, yep. to show the students an you know, introduction uh, or, uh, about the industry. And after that, you organize nowadays webinar, uh, you know, uh, a small group uh, discussion. Uh, we have also three global headhunters uh, offering their pro bono services. 
teaching students about uh, CV writing and interview skills. Uh, and last but not least, I need to congratulate the IFA uh, CFA uh, Institute yes. uh, for two very good programs. One is the Investment Foundation program, which is uh, online and completely free. And uh, the beauty about that is that it it's offers a very comprehensive introduction to the industry. It's not just targeting about investment professionals. Mm. Right? And this is a very good introduction to students who are interested in the financial services industry. So they don't need to wait till they get a job before you know, they get the training. The other one, uh, which is also very, very useful, uh, and that I need to look up. I just want to make sure I get the <laughs> name correct. Okay. Uh, um, is the professional learning multimedia. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have been using that a lot. Uh, it, again, um, it's got very rich content. It's good for the professional as well as students. So um, I very much look forward to working closely with uh, CFA uh, Society Hong Kong uh, to develop uh, our local talents. You know, so thanks for that. Right. Even though we don't have the uh, cash allowance for the government, for the CFA charter, but charter holder, but still we're seeing a good collaboration between the government and also the uh, CFA society and the industry practitioners. So it's very promising. So now I, I, um, I have to turn to the KOL uh, for specific question. It's a rare chance for me to speak to a, a person with 2 million followers anyway. <laughs> so I, I need your advice um, to the CFA members on the career development in equipping, equipping for the future success. So uh, can I hear more from you? Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's really, you know, uh, so exciting for me to be here, although I cannot be there uh, in person in Hong Kong. The first time I was in Hong Kong uh, was 1993. I was work working in Hong Kong uh, Electric Company. So I'm a Hong Kong PR now. Uh, I've worked 10 years in the financial sector. So I do know Hong Kong. And your question is, what is my advice for the CFA members yep. for their career development in the future? So the one thing that has changed is social media. So let me just bring out this chart. Whoa. So we know that people have been using social media for social reason. That was before COVID. After COVID, we now need to use social media for professional reason to maintain relationship with professional people like you, like Joanne. And going forward, we're going to use more of LinkedIn to maintain our relationship with people because finance is really a people's business. We need to win trust. We need to build relationships much more than the products that we are selling. For example, if there are portfolio managers out there, you need to build relationship with your investors, with your colleagues. And how do you maintain relationship when we cannot meet so often? And Hong Kong is a hub. It's, it's, it's not a standalone. It has to have interaction with Singapore, with China, and the rest of the world. When we cannot fly, social media is the way. So I think for people who are thinking about their career now is to switch gear and start using social media for professional relationship and to build rapport with colleagues, potential client, and also your potential investors. So that is point number one. My second point is Zoom is going to be here to stay for a while. So we need to know how to use our Zoom because there'll be so many meetings with investors, roadshows. Not only do we need to use Zoom properly on our own, we need to teach our clients as well. Our clients may not be on roadshow to London or New York as frequently as before. And they may not be good at using Zoom. So we need to teach them. Before that, we need to make sure that we are good. So the way we look, we sound on Zoom is very key for our career. And for those who are starting out, who are trying to get jobs in finance sector, where interviews are now done via Zoom, so how clear is your audio becomes super key. 
more important than the product knowledge, more important than your knowledge of the financial sector. So these are my two tips. Use social media for professional relationship because when we don't meet, we need to be seen on people's mobile phone. The average time that people spend on social media is 144 minutes a day. So that's a survey being done. And number two is to be able to wow your audience with superb quality video conferences. That's the two points that I have for those who are listening out there if you want to do well in your career in the next couple of years. Thanks, oh. Jimmy. Thanks for asking me and thanks for inviting. I'm super glad to be here. So now I realize I cannot be a KOL anyway. So uh, from, <laughs> I learned from your talk a lot. So I like the uh, technology, right? I got to adopt it in my next Zoom meeting. So uh, I, I think we are level too old for the technology. We always embrace change and we have a framework and we work together, you know, the government and also the uh, practitioners, the society. So I, I'm pretty sure we have a bright future. So let's have our fingers crossed to see, you know, things will definitely going better. And also we will take up the mask very soon. So uh, thank you so much today. So pick up a cross uh, hand clap for our guests today. Thank you.